The original uh, Zoo DJ library is actually located in the Zoo office. So uh, basically, you can tell we've been buying vinyls, and it's inevitable that you run out of space, so you don't have a choice. So at the same time, uh, this space was a kitchen, and we, we decided to uh, close the, uh, the restaurant uh, and to build velvet, and then we use this kitchen to being transformed into a, a, it wasn't a library actually, it was more like a storage space. So, so us being DJ, so we improvise it and make it more comfortable. Yeah, put some decks in and all that. It became like a place where we can now in practice. We actually have a directory for uh, the first few years. Well, we were buying like, we have seven resident DJ. So each will have his own space. Space and you know you buy their own records. We're talking about maybe a hundred records each a month. You know, that's how we how much we purchase. So you can you just can't keep track of that. So we decided the best system is to like each have his own space and then they just organize it themselves. So but recently Jeremy I once caught him <laughs> taking out every single record to place in the correct manner. So if you notice, <laughs> every vinyl is oriented properly, mm -hmm. has to protect them. And I think he's quite good at categorizing. So like you have all your mumbo here, your, all your masters at work there, uh, you know better, right? Yeah, we tried, I tried to organize it a little bit, but you know, like the better records, the useful records are put aside, those that, you know, not so good. So you just have to like dump it on one side. So back then you can't really, there wasn't any internet or whatever. So you rely on your your connection in overseas, you no? Know, how trustworthy they are. They'll tell you like, okay, this is a good record. And then business being business as well. you will slot a few couple of records that's not so good and then you just put it in the box and give it to you. So those are records that you chuck on one side. And you, you don't get to listen to all, all the stuff, so we do buy a lot of records that we don't use actually. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> uh, it's quite a lot actually. Yeah. Like we, we used to have a, a turntable, where was it? Yeah. And, and we get promos, we get white labels, we get acetate and all that being sent to us. And actually you've got a good collection in here, so a lot of stuff they can actually sample, especially now that dance music are, are ripping off a lot of like 90s house stuff, 90s underground stuff. Yeah, it did go in here if you actually spend a lot of time. Yeah. I think um, the, the records that we, or that Jeremy uses most are actually in the Zoo console and just until recently, we did actually keep a batch in Velvet mm -hmm. as well, but um, it was just, it wasn't used. Yeah, it wasn't used anymore because everything went, went digital, so uh, I decided to go digital as well. And it's a lot easier because I was juggling between playing CDs and uh, CD to like, you know, burn CD, you download and you burn it, and then you play some vinyl, but the sound quality is so... To me, I can hear it, especially with our, our GSA sound system, right? Every frequency can be heard, can be heard and you can hear the dynamic is so different and, and whenever you play a, a down 320 or even wave, right? You hear there's a drop in Energy the, and the, the, low, the low frequency, the harmonic of the sub, right? You can't really get it out of uh, digital stuff. It's, you only can generate through, through vinyl and through turntable and and especially through our modified arm techniques and tables, uh, SME arm, and it sounds really good. So I miss the sound, but I don't have a choice because most of the stuff are on digital now. Mm -hmm. So, well, I have to make the switch eventually, but I still miss playing it. So uh, I think it'd be great if you like start playing some of this during end of the night, you know, and you can feel the power of the music.
But actually, I mean, like, uh, I think the people like uh, Sven Vath, like, yeah. he plays like a full vinyl set, yeah. like, he played it in a while Zoom, ago, yeah. and then you could really feel the, the low end, and yeah. you need that for the music, like, you need that rolling, yeah, yeah. like, bass, that. especially when you're playing techno or, like, mm, other genres that. like that, mm. to kind of move the people. When you're playing, like, a 320 MP3, then don't really get that it's a bit more sharp on the highs yeah you, you won't get that yeah you, you get the same it's the same note but it just the harmonic is, is missing so a piano might sound like a guitar but it's the same note mm -hmm. this is different when you play a, a vinyl and then you play a, a low quality mp3 file oh, even the 320 oh, even the 320 yeah. you can tell it just you know but if you play a whole set of it no one can tell because you're, you're tuned to it and, and, and the new generation now are tuned to the it's standard like wave of the, <laughs> the new generation of mastering so people just ignore the whole vinyl thing so but it, it's a taste yeah I it's mean, a taste you and can't and say it's one one's yeah. better than the other but in the, in the deep house and techno scene people still putting vinyl because it sounds the best out of vinyl because they need that because for that genre of music right i can say that it doesn't sound good on digital file like yeah. deep house and techno it sounds totally different and i i think i think also like when you put when you push it then uh the kind of distortion that you get when you play a vinyl record yeah, is, yeah. A, is a lot uh, fuller yeah. whereas if you uh play uh, mp3 then it will just clip and sound quite bad yeah even a, a wave downloaded wave yeah it still can't be the Final. Sometimes it's just like I just don't want to listen to it or just I will start going like wow you know I'm sort of complaining about how I wish I can play vinyl again so <laughs> <laughs> I rather no, don't touch it in a way. Yeah, I, I think like if you play it you need to feel it so if yeah. you're just at home listening to it like very softly there's yeah. not really much of a point but yeah. I, th I think if you really like your song yeah. and then the artwork is, yeah. is, is something but, fresh. But, but I, I have to uh, highlight that this, you only can tell the difference if you get a good system. If you don't have a good sound system, right, you can't really tell the difference. Yeah. Because, well, if the system is bad, right, whatever you play sounds bad anyway. But no, I, think, I think it's more of a nostalgic thing, yeah. actually. Because, I mean, uh, everyone wants to relive their past, right? And then if you see like a record, like a, yeah. a old Masters at Work record or like an old like, drum and bass record yeah. and you just see that kind of like scribbling writing like oh, uh, blah 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 VIP, blah mm -hmm. blah white label, mm -hmm. then like you can say oh I have this record and I was there. I think it's more of a statement than yeah, but anything else. I right feel now. that you know people should appreciate record as well like a piece of art because you know like those days like when you make a uh, single or an album it's just like painting uh, an art piece because that is like uh, something that people hang on the wall or they keep it because it's something that uh, is tangible you know like this day is just a foul you know and I know like some of the big artists they do respect vinyl as well especially like Swedish House Mafia even though you know they are the new generation like download artists right but they do release, like, they have their single Greyhound on vinyl and it was like, great looking album cover with everything and, and it's great. Item. It's a collector's item. I mean, you appreciate, it's a good tune, right? I mean, kids will go down there sharing each other, right, sharing the file and then, why not if you really like it, right, buy a piece of it hanging on the wall? So if people have scanned into that kind of, like, culture, right, I mean, vinyl will always be alive. You know, it's just like, you like it, buy a piece of art, you know, hang it on the wall and pick it up. Play on a turntable, you know, with a good system. Mean, when you know you have the money to buy a good system, if not, you just play on the iPod. You know. But then also turntables. I mean, <laughs> even even our even our turntables are a bit hard to maneuver. The yeah. position of them. Yeah. So I mean, I think a lot of clubs don't really. And and plus the fact that, that people uh, don't really play vinyl much is uh, you can do a lot more with CDJs. You know, you can you can loop and. It's a lot more you can do. It's more flexible, yeah. You know, and you can you can do more stuff. And like some DJ going to digital platform and all that's the reason why they do that. Because 
they can do a lot more with music and get well, more you can innovate you can innovate yeah. more than you could with vinyl in, in a, unless a, you're a turntable a house DJ's point of view but a hip hop DJ is no problem they'll get in vinyl they can do magic but we are not hip hop trained you know? <laughs> <laughs> even though I tried you know doing it for a few years when I was doing my teenage years but, yeah. I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up too long. Yeah. The songs that I grew up to, but I I couldn't remember like let's see, like, I couldn't remember the songs, but I know them. Uh, they're part of my oral vocabulary. I don't know where I heard them from, and like these are all collector's editions. Yeah, you can see the effort into the, the artwork. Yeah. yeah. And the presentation. It's really part of history and they are in mint condition. Yeah, yeah they kind of. Smell it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, there's we actually have a decent drum, drum and bass collect, collection uh, from back from the 90s. Uh, yeah, the mid '90s, which was pretty much the best time in drum bass for me. <laughs> so, like, to find these records, it's quite nostalgic for me. This box, uh, this is a glass box actually. This record box is like, you know, back then record box is is like. You know, whether you carry a Prada or Louis Vuitton and DJ have fancy record box. And this box actually belongs to my uh, the owner Lincoln. And you want to know how old the collection is, right? Is this is like his collection. You know? You got like Bob Marley's and Wheeler's Life. You got like uh, some psychedelic track. <laughs> psychedelic track. Yeah, you know, Black Yuhuru. Uh, reggae and uh, right on time, Lolita. Carol King, <laughs> yeah. And uh, what else? Interesting stuff like uh, uh, Elton John. <laughs> Last time we used to remember yeah. the tracks by the picture on, yeah. <laughs> on the covers. Mini now. And, uh, and, and this one is a bit like it's a tosh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, okay, this is like really old stuff and, and here is my personal collection I lock it actually I hope I still remember the lock number <laughs> <laughs> when's the last time you opened it? <laughs> I cannot remember okay. Okay. yeah I got it so uh, okay. Well, uh, you can say one of like one of the rarest, rec most rare record I have is a uh, is a uh, Sivuka version of uh, Inu Sunshine. It's like a Latin jazz version of it. It's like, so hard to get hold of it. And uh, what happened here? Like, uh, personal favorite. Maybe uh, this one. Uh, I have two copies of it. It's uh, <laughs> Dion Warwick and uh, Isaac Hayes. He has like a, a really good live version of uh, Ken Hang Love, the original by Open and Fire. But this is so good. So I have two copies of it. It's very rare. Uh, John Penn, you can let me. Not really my favorite, but I don't know why he's in here. And uh, something that I really like is like, uh, like Rudy Mix, uh, Level 42. Like, like some jazz stuff, like uh, Sugar Kid Hill Gang. <laughs> Uh, all kinds. I think that's a the Donna thing. Holloway brass construction. I'm more like a, a really so so oh, hate. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Last so, time. yeah. <laughs> but actually, I think there's a thing like last like there's a lot of animosity between like older DJs and younger DJs yeah, yeah, yeah. because I mean I'm young, but I remember like forking up like fifty pounds for one rare record, like 
bidding on eBay, like checking it every minute. <laughs> but nowadays, everyone just rips it off YouTube. But a good one is like this box set is like it's very rare. I don't even really know who it is. Uh, Fela Kuti. He's a politician from uh, Nigeria. So he performed like seven nights a week, and he actually got seventy wives. <laughs> and call wives the Africa seventy. So this is this uh, limited edition. So like authority stealing and all that. So his message against the the government. So it's really good music. Now do you want to play it? <laughs> so some Go of this one. stuff is just like uh, some of his music is twenty minutes long. So it's just one side is instrumental and then you continue the other side. So it's crazy.